Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to get JSON with the JavaScript fetch method. So another way to request external data is to use JavaScript fetch method. So this is just going to be a different way of doing the same thing we did last. It is the equivalent of the XML HTTP request, but the syntax is considered easier to understand. Here is the code for making a get request to JSON cats.json. So they have a function, it just simply says fetch, and then it looks like it has the URL. And then it says then. So and then so then we're using um, ES6. We're saying we're getting single line ones, right? This is we're sending in a parameters to a function, an anonymous function, a response, and we're saying response. We're just res responding with the JSON response, and then we're taking the next one. So we're fetching it. Um, it looks like we've got the response here, and then we're saying we're setting the data. We want to respond with the data. We're trying to make the this whole function play out to just return the data. And once the data is received, it's going to find the document get element by ID. So it's going to find the message and it's going to make the inner HTML equal to the string, stringy, the stringified version of the JSON data being received. Okay, so I just made that up. Now let's read what they have to say. So we take a look at each piece of this code. The first line is the one that makes the request. So fetch makes a get request to the URL specified. The method returns a promise. Okay, so this method returns a promise. After a promise is returned, if the request was successful, the then method is executed, which takes the response and converts it to a JSON method. It just converts it to a JSON format. Cool. So if it's if our fetch request was successful, this will be turned in to a JSON formatted object. And then, so this is another promise, I'm guessing. And then what we're going to do is run into the next one. The then method also returns a promise. So this guy also returns a promise, which is handled by the next then method. So then we're looking at this guy. The argument in the second then is the JSON object you are looking for. So here is the JSON object that we're looking for. Now it selects the element in which uh, oh, that will receive the data by using document.getElementById. So here, get element by ID message and our ID message, your message will go here. It's changed from the last one. Your message will go here. So it's saying grab that and then inside of that, we're going to pump in the json.stringify data. And this data is a parameter which is being passed in by this asynchronous uh, function. Then it modifies the HTML code on the element by inserting a string created from the JSON object returned from the object. So update the code to create and get and send a get request to the free code camp API cat photo API. But this time use fetch method instead of X, a XML HTTP request. Okay, so let's scroll back up here. It looks, yeah, now we're actually starting to use, um, yeah, ES6 functions, which is pretty cool. So we could get rid of this, kind of clean up our code a little. Um, This should have a space in it. Okay, cool. So let's start right here in the middle of this. Um, so what do we want to do? We want to go fetch, and we want to pass in the URL for the free Code Camp API, right? So forward slash JSON forward slash cats dot JSON. And now uh, we want to start chaining events. So we're going to say then. Um, let's see. Yeah, we're just going to say. Well, here, I'm gonna do it in, in vanilla and then we'll refactor later. So function, and then we're going to say um, our, our response, and we're going, to set, we're going to return our response. And we wanna do response.json. Um, cool, okay, so now what we're doing is on the, res on the response, we're gonna give it back. And so now what we want to go is then, and we're going to do another function in which we pass our data. And we want to return. Here we want to say uh, document.getElementById, and we're going to get message. So we're going to get the element by ID, which is this guy, the message, the P element. And then we're going to say, we're going to go the inner text. I think it's inner text. Enter HTML. 
We'll set this equal to json.stringify. String, stringify. And we're going to pass in our data. Cool. Let's run the test, see what happens. Message will go here. Should convert the response to JSON. What happens if we click? It converts it to JSON.stringify data. Got it. Dot stringified data. Inner HTML is equal to JSON stringified data. Well, it totally works. Um, it's just not getting the same response. Okay, so maybe they're, they just really want us to do this in ES6. So let's start refactoring things down and get them back to here. Um, you know, one thing that I think, this is the same thing. I'm not sure. I would doubt that this would make a difference. Maybe what we need to do is just return this. And here, if we get the message, we still get the same results. Um, but the tests still don't pass. It says your code should use then to convert the response to JSON. And we're doing that. So my guess is that we just need to uh, refactor down to the way that they showed us this. So here, we're using the second line in a return statement. Instead of doing that, we can just use the implicit return uh, that we get from ES6. And the same thing with this guy. And my guess is that this will actually cause the tests to get passed. And we want to keep this chained method up here like this. Um, and I'm actually going to do it up here too, because I like having the code be readable. Um, JSON is equal to that. So that's kind of more readable. If we run the tests, they still don't pass. Your code should use then, then. Well, here we no longer need these um, uh, parentheses. Maybe that'll help us. Let's run the tests. Nope. Response.json data. Get element by ID message JSON stringified data. Let's run the test, see if that made any difference. We can see the code's still working, it's just not passing the tests. JSON. Stringify. Inner HTML message. Get elements by ID. Get element by ID. Document. Well, maybe for some reason we need to put this on a second line because that's what this guy's doing. And that'll actually clean it up a little bit as well. Cool. Well, let's see what. See, now, now it's still working. This whole time it's been working, we're just trying to get the tests to pass. That was it. So something involving the having this on a separate line was the key to success here. Um, so yeah, this is just doing the exact same thing we did in the last lesson, but um, using this fetch then sort of system. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.